Welcome back. In a moment, we'll find out about the future of nuclear power. But first, here are some other stories to keep an eye on. New Zealand's North Island is bracing itself as Cyclone Cook, called the worst storm in generation, hits inland. States of emergency have been declared in the northeast of the country, with landslips, flash flooding and downed power lines crossing roads. It comes after severe floods caused by the remnants of Cyclone Debbie hit some parts of the country last week. A Malaysian court has deferred the case of two women accused of killing the estranged half-brother of North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un. Prosecutors have requested more time to collect documents and for the case to be transferred to a higher court. The case has been postponed until May 30th. And protests in Venezuela continue to grow following the killing of a teenage demonstrator. A 14-year-old boy and another protester were shot dead. The local governor has blamed armed government supporters. Nicolas Maduro's presidency has come under increasing pressure as the economy suffers and opponents accuse him of creating a dictatorship. Back now to nuclear power and the impact of events like Fukushima. Before the crisis, 30% of Japan's power was nuclear. Afterwards, all 48 power stations were shut down. Six years later, only two are back online. But while some countries have sworn off nuclear power because of public opposition, others are forging ahead with a new atomic age. There are currently 31 countries in the world which have operational nuclear power plants. The world's first nuclear power plant was built at Obninsk in Russia in 1954, and despite it being experimental technology, it operated until 2002 without any major incidents or deaths. The US has the largest number of nuclear reactors in the world, with 61 commercially operating nuclear power plants, with 99 nuclear reactors in 30 US states. In 2015, nuclear power plants in the US accounted for 19.5% of US electricity and generated 797.2 billion kilowatt hours. France is home to the second largest number of nuclear reactors in the world. It has 58 reactors scattered across 23 different locations. The country derives about 75% of its electricity from nuclear energy due to a long-standing policy based on energy security. In comparison, in Latin America, there are just seven nuclear power reactors, three in Argentina, two in Brazil and two in Mexico. Well, with me in our studio today, Mark Whitby is Chairman and Design Director at the engineering consultancy firm WME and Dr David Lowry, an independent research policy consultant who specialises in nuclear issues. We have this discrepancy, David, don't we? The Chinese are marching ahead, believing that nuclear really is the way forward. Europeans more sceptical. Germany is trying to go nuclear power free soon. Yes, well, the Chinese are pushing ahead with a significant number of new nuclear power plants, but they're also pushing ahead with a large number of wind power machines and also solar energy. In fact, they're the world's biggest wind power manufacturers at the moment. China's going big in everything. In Europe, um, the reason why the nuclear power has been rained back is twofold. One is the post-Fukushima accident concerns, and that's why the German Chancellor in the, in the immediate aftermath decided to bring forward the close down of the nuclear power program in Germany, which is already going to be phased out over a longer time period. Mm. Uh, in other countries, the problem has been finance. Uh, France does get a huge amount of its electricity from nuclear, but its main uh, nuclear power generator, EDF, is 33 billion euros in debt. It can't find the money to build a new nuclear power plant at Hinkley C in the UK. And the constructor manufacturer, Areva, at the moment embroiled in a number of uh, controversies, including uh, allegations that it doctored the data sheets on safety for the French nuclear safety regulator and could, uh, could end up um, being big trouble with the nuclear safety regulator in France. Uh, in the United States, although um, the government speaks positively about new nuclear, those who want to invest in it say the opposite. Uh, the one company that's building nuclear plants in America, Westinghouse, has just filed for bankruptcy in the United States. Its owner, Toshiba, from Japan, is also in financial crisis and could actually collapse as a company. And the United States has only got one uh, reactor complex under construction, and that's by Westinghouse, who may have none under construction in the near future. Yeah. It's not a very happy picture, isn't it? Mark, is it this huge capital cost that we alluded to in our first conversation that because you have to build in so many safety factors into a nuclear power station these days, they're almost too costly to build? Well, it's not just that. It's also the fact they take forever to make. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, the one in France, Flammaville, which uh, David mentioned, it's where Reaver have... Uh, 
uh, falsified the accounts or the safety records for the uh, reactor head. Um, that's been now put on hold. It's maybe three times over budget, and it's uh, about six years late. Yeah. Now, that's costing people a lot of money. Um, if you took the same money um, and invested it in a, in a wind turbine, you'd have a return tomorrow, and you could then reinvest the money you earned from that um, again to get another return. Um, England, well, Europe actually has the most fantastic resource in terms of the North Sea, which is a benign environment where the wind blows, and it's easy to build wind turbines. Germany, Holland, Denmark, and other countries have clubbed together to really exploit this building in industry, whether it's Siemens or Vestas, around that, and are leading the way. There's even a plan to build a new island in the North Sea, just outside British territorial waters, which will be act as a hub to transmit the power back to Europe. And what, what would render nuclear generation as uneconomic, if it, that, it, if it, that it, works? There is no question it, nuclear is uneconomic. We know that. It's already been demonstrated by the subsidy that um, EDF had to be granted in order to yeah. begin to even think about building Hinkley. And even as we, they begin to think about it, there's no private investor who will come forward and do it. But, David, what's the conundrum here? Normally, when an engineering um, process matures, uh, wisdom grows in it, technique get better, and normally the cost comes down. Mm -hmm. But it seems as the, as the decades have worn on, the cost of using nuclear power to generate electricity just seems to go off the scale. Well, nuclear is unique in, uh, in terms of uh, industries. Uh, it has a negative learning curve. That the, the, the longer just you explain that. Plant, what do you mean? The longer you operate a nuclear power plant, the more complex it becomes, the more problems that they have. And it turns out that they end up having more and more difficulties the older it gets, rather than learning from the past and actually have more difficulties. Yeah. And because nuclear is strictly regulated for good reasons, that if you have a problem in, a, in an accident like Fukushima or Chernobyl, you have a disaster, um, the regulators keep on requiring more and more upgraded standards for operating of the plant, which costs money for the operators. And of course, when they have to turn them off in order to implement changes, they're losing the revenue they would have got from selling the electricity. So it's a, what they call a stranded asset. It's a big expensive sure. engineering plant sitting there. And they have a nothing. ridiculous long tail too, don't they? Because you've got costs to look after the waste products from this process for generations to come. Well, well it's quite interesting that because the decommissioning of our existing fleet in England is costing more than the the value of all the electricity that they generated in their lifetime. And that's just right. the decommissioning and, and trying to... And we haven't so even if we, found if a way we were able to spin back, you'd just never have started, would you, if you I, knew that was going to be exactly. the end financial cost? But you have to also bear in mind that, that when the, we set out to do this, there was a, an ulterior motive with the first nuclear power stations were not purely domestic generators. They were, as we suspect in Iran, also about making nuclear material for sure. weapons. Absolutely, that's exactly what happened, and indeed, um, some of the material that was produced in those reactors was, has ended up in the nuclear warhead stockpile, both in UK and in the United States. Um, a pessimistic way in which to end our conversation, but Mark Whitby, David Lowry, thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Let's end our programme show with the Insight Bite. This is a little something that we feel you should know. And today we are in China, where the nation has been welcoming in the new year. And for those in the southwest, that means dragon boat races, a 2,000-year-old tradition. Maneuvering and racing a dragon boat demands good coordination and communication of a large team, all of whom need to paddle in time. Otherwise, the boat will start to feel tippy, rocking from one side to another. Fortunately for the 600 competitors in this year's race, it was all smooth sailing. And that's all from me for now. I'm Martin Stanford. That was Insight.